The late Michael Jackson is arguably still one of the biggest pop stars of any generation. The height of his solo popularity was back in the 1980s, and in 1988 he released his pop promo movie, Moonwalker. This was a slightly strange piece of 80s nostalgia that taps straight into Jackson's weird and wonderful mind. So when Jackson, who was an avid gamer, wanted a game created to tie in with the movie, of course it went ahead for various systems. The three-player arcade game is very memorable and will be covered in a later episode. However, for the Mega Drive version, Sega started development with the game being released in Europe on the 25th of January 1991. When you put in the cartridge and switch the system on, you are greeted with the traditional Sega logo and a basic starting screen. From here, you can start the game and choose one or two players, or better with the options. This option screen is quite interesting as you can play the 16-bit samples of the game's music and sound effects. Obviously, I don't want a copyright strike, so I'm not going to play them here in any great detail, but you get the gist. When you start the game, you'll see it's roughly the same game mechanics as another Sega legendary game, Shinobi. It's a side-scrolling platform game, but in this game the basis of every level is to rescue a defined number of children. No sniggering at the back, please. And then you face off against the end of stage boss. The kids do resemble the character Katie from the film, well, as much as they can using the sprites available. The controls are easy enough. A does a special hat throwing spinny move, B does a Michael Jackson kick, and C jumps. Holding onto the A button powers up Michael, and that makes all the enemies on the screen dance themselves to death. Particularly amusing is when the dogs do it on one of the later levels. Saving a child and grabbing a comet, just, just stay with me here, it changes Michael into a robot, as per the more strange bit of the movie, and this gives Michael the ability to fly and shoot missiles. All the levels have their own unique style. Stage 1 is set in Club 30, where the children are hidden behind various doors around the levels. Stage 2 is set in the street, outside and there's various children hidden in the boots of cars this time, with the thugs clicking their fingers like the in West Side Story. Stage 3 is set in the woods. Stage 4 is set in a cavern, with children hidden in various caves. And the last stage, the enemy hideout, which is, again sees the kids hidden behind various doors. I mean, these bad guys need to start getting more original. Once you save all the kids, Bubbles the Monkey then appears out of nowhere and points you into the section you need to be at to fight the end of level boss. Each level gets progressively harder, with the end of level bosses there merely a vast amount of the levels enemies swarming all over you at the same time. A little bit more imagination would have been good for the end of level bosses, but it is what it is. At the end of level 5-3 you are then taken into a spaceship level, again stay with me here, and to defeat the game you are faced with shooting Mr. Big's spaceship down. It's easy enough to do, but it's, it's far removed from the rest of the game and just kind of fits in with the, the whole Moonwalker style. Special mention does need to be made to the music in this game. Every level has got 16-bit representations of popular Michael Jackson songs with translations of Smooth Criminal, Beat It, Another part of me. Billy Jean. And bad. Although, why they didn't use Thriller for the zombie stages, I just don't know.
You will notice that during the end credits that Michael Jackson himself is noted as a producer, but how much he actually had to do with this still remains up for debate. This game still remains one of the favourites on the Mega Drive system, with a mass system conversion also available. Like I said earlier, there is an arcade version, but this is a vastly different game and it's well worth a look at. I very much enjoyed playing this game, both at the time and again for this review, so do yourself a favour, go and pick it up and relieve that 80s cheese all over again. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time on Noob Game Reviews.